a chef, you're as only good as your last plate of food. The public will tell you that. If I were doing horrible food, the doors would have been closed some time ago. My approach now to food is through a lens of history. You know, how do I incorporate our ancestry into the food that I put on the plate? People have an expectation of the dishes because even though we said modern soul food, they just see soul food. So then it's an the expectation that it's, if they come in here, the food is going to taste like their grandmothers, their mothers. And knowing that it's not going to because this is David's interpretation of the dish. I mean, I don't think you can stay stagnant. And I think that's possibly why soul food has not been appreciated. You know, we're more than a styrofoam plate. You know, we're more than a carryout. So for me, modern soul food is capturing those things and continuing to pull that story forward. I'm pretty much the front of the house, but I do manage everyone in the space as well. He's the executive chef, but he is also the partner and owner. We've been married for um, 26 years. When we met, we were in a whole different industry. Originally, I was in the music business. She was a regional or district manager for um, this clothing chain, and they were opening this new store in my neighborhood. So I'm going down the hill, and I see this beautiful woman like, who is that? You know, um, and she saw me, and she looked at me like I was crazy, because I was like looking at her like she was candy. <laughs> I didn't. They hired me. Um, I ended up being a part-time associate. I was his boss. And I think, you know, being a woman and a manager, you feel like you have to be I guess some more coldness about yourself. You have everything to gain. And nothing to lose except a job. And about 10 feet of pride. To show that you have a strength so no one <laughs> will like roll over you if you have to direct a man in, in the workspace. Um, I was able to take her out. Um, and 26 years later, we're still together. He definitely grew on me, just working in the same space. And I think the great thing is that we became friends first. And of course, I think that's what made us last as long as we <laughs> now. We, and we know how to work together. I'm having our own catering business, I would say, was the first job in the food industry. When I was in junior high school, I fell in love with cooking because my grandmother would say some of the things that she loved to eat. And I said, oh, I want to learn how to cook this for you. And some of the things I did for her, she loved, and that just made me happy. And then eventually, I guess I used the experience I learned in working in businesses to go into making a catering business. When I got married, you know, my wife was already doing like small office parties and stuff like that, so she was already doing catering. You know, I was watching what she was doing, and I was like, oh, that is beautiful, and you obviously know how to cook. Um, I had been cooking, you know, in and out of different places for, you know, a couple of years, off and on part-time, but it was once I got married that I really decided, okay, you know what, I need to step out of the music business and focus my energy on learning how to prepare food properly. He surpassed me and what I thought I was gonna do in food. And eventually, we wound up both in the same restaurants together, working together, and then of course, opening the restaurants together. I, I couldn't do anything without her. Um, she is everything to me, and we have the same vision. Um, you know, my focus was for me and our staff here to kind of reclaim the narrative of what soul food is. Now, I mean, if you think about soul food, it's probably not the best looking plate of food um, that you can come across. But nobody ever said it wasn't good. Nobody ever said soul food wasn't tasting good. Um, but what we want to do is to further that experience. 
Well, as a person in food, as a chef, he's grown definitely from over the years. More definitely in tune into heritage and culture when it comes to food. He wanted to do Southern food initially, but then he wanted to make it more soul food. He think it was a need to bring light on that food and in a space where people don't typically see soul food. I mean, this project always, always for me has been about us reclaiming the narrative. Africa, you know, is extremely important in what soul food is. Um, so tonight we're going to be going through a couple different countries. The beauty about Southern food and soul food is that when I touch on soul food, I'm touching on Africa, Israel. I'm touching on, you know, parts of Spain and France. Our food is global because of the influences. I don't see it as gentrification as I see it more as reclaiming a narrative and moving it to the 21st, 22nd century. Yes, um, not everybody appreciates that, but I'm a creative and I have the right, um, especially in my own space, to do the things that I want to do. So, you know, what I like, what I enjoy, what my, you know, palate tells me is good may not be for everybody. You push the envelope too far and it just doesn't work. And sometimes you straddle a line enough where, you know what, you have one foot in, you know, tradition and one foot in fantasy and creativity. Food is personal. And everyone's taste or the expectation of what they want is different. That's the educational process. Being local and sustainable. Our whole focus is about you tasting the food and not being overly seasoned that you just taste the seasoning and not the product itself. It's a cleaner taste. We're using, doing everything from scratch. There's no preservatives in it. So that's an educational process. If you are in the food business um, and you are cooking at a certain level, if you want to be creative, you're going to have to accept the fact that sometimes what you create is not going to be well received. You just go back to the drawing board, do something different, or take that dish and refine it. I think she is really the soul of the restaurant. I do see us, you know, David and I is like in partnership and equal in doing what we're doing. But I think I've always been the person to support him in leaving his legacy and all that he's done over the years as far as um, being a chef. Um, I guess the legacy is that, you know, is I guess that we created a space that people felt like they were coming back home to. If we can kind of create that for people that don't have a way of going back home or they miss home or this is their home away from home, what we bring and do in this space, then that's, that'll be a great legacy. I want African-American chefs to be respected and revered, just like you do any other culture. You know, mac and cheese, collard greens, fried chicken, you know, peas and rice, all those things. that are absolutely delicious and I will eat them probably till the day I leave here. But we never really change or evolve. I believe that soul food, southern food, should be revered as one of the great cuisines of the world. You know, we use the same techniques as the French do. We revere our sauces just like the Italians do, whether it's red sauce or whatever. We're using the same techniques, so why are we not looked at in the same light? Maybe it's because of our presentation. Maybe because of the humble beginnings of slaves. You know, we're more than a styrofoam plate. You know, we're more than a carryout. But who needs to and who is going to change that narrative? That's what IW's table is about for me.